We often talk about what's the best all-round knife. We made a couple of videos already. We gave a Petty a shot. We gave a Guto a shot. Santoku's a good option too. Uh, we're gonna give a Nakiri a try today. Let's see if we can do a whole meal with just a Nakiri. A lot of people don't realize that a Nakiri can be really all-purpose, all-round. Uh, rectangular shape, often it's best for veggies, but when you, we're in the shops or online, in the comments, wherever, you get a ton of questions asking, well, can you actually cut meat with it? So what I thought I'd do today is we're gonna make, uh, I'm here in the studio warehouse in Calgary. We're gonna uh, make some fried chicken sandwiches for the staff today, so I can get a good chance to show you what it's, what we all know it's good for already, and then kind of put it through a couple of tests and see if it manages well in places where we're not 100% sure. Well, I think I've seen Nathan cut 4,000 cabbages. We always, cabbage is a good, it's a good vegetable. They're cheap, they taste good, and uh, they're kind of exactly what a nakiri is for. Um, so we're gonna do these fried chicken sandwiches. Who doesn't like that? That'll be good. Everyone's gonna like that, that's great. So we're gonna make coleslaw first. Main thing in coleslaw is cabbage. Oh, almost dropped it. Uh, and a really good example of showing how you might use a nakiri and take advantage of that flat, flat edge on the knife, right? So, I like to, I kind of seesaw a little bit because it's so dense. Get that out of there. This is one of those things where people ask about like, oh, is it helpful having a point on the knife? Depends on what you're doing. Right, get it in that kind of classic pinch grip. Make sure you're holding onto the blade. It gives you better control. And you always want to like let it just kind of go, like go forward a little bit. You know, if you just drop it through, like sure it works, but it's not what it was meant to do. Um, the height is handy. A little bit of a taller blade for when you're going through a taller vegetable. You kind of get to push through it a little bit more. The extra weight gives you, it's almost like a train plowing its way through uh, through the cabbage, you know? I like a really tall Nakiri, uh, you know, like this is a Haruyuki Kokuto. Um, this is a pretty standard size Nakiri. Uh, I don't know how tall it actually is. I'm gonna get, it's somewhere around two inches, two and a half inches tall. I like the big ones, like any of the Masakage Nakiris, you can expect to be a lot bigger. Uh, the Moritaka ones, I like those too, the bigger size ones. I think that's the real reason why I get asked to do these videos, is every time I do them, there's always lots of food afterwards. And maybe today, I'll even get some. This is probably why more, more people really like it and curious, you can scoop up with it a little bit. Just be careful you're not like ramming a sharp knife into your hand, you're not scraping the edge around on the board. It is okay to pick things up like that though. You know what I learned? You don't need a peeler to peel a carrot. You need to use tin foil. Weird, eh? It's stupid though, don't do it. Anything you like about these vegetables? Oh, this is the best peeler ever. Like I, I've had, like, they got this little carbon steel blade. They stay sharp forever. They rust if you throw them in the dishwasher, let them sit wet in the sink, but I've never used a sharper one. And I don't like those ones where it's like, I don't know, like a straight peeler where you're just kind of like scraping away, like you're whittling. I don't like that. So when you're dealing with a round thing, you've seen us say it a thousand times, cut a little bit off so it doesn't roll around so much. The thing about carrots is they're cheap. So as soon as it feels dangerous, stop. Like, this is what this knife is made for, this kind of stuff. You know, just like plowing through a ton of vegetables. There's a reason why we're always referencing coleslaw and cabbage and, you know. But, you know, if you don't eat coleslaw, like, think about making a stir fry. Think about any old salad, any, you know, maybe you're work at a big hotel and you gotta shift it out a ton of mint or something all the time. Like a lot of the Nakiris these days, they do allow, you probably notice me like, like I can chop like that, right? But I do prefer to rock my knife. And some Nakiris don't have as pronounced a curve at the tip. Like a Moritaka Nakiri, for instance, is not gonna be 
as forgiving with that rocking. You're gonna find yourself digging the tip of it into your cutting board a bit. Because if I'm gonna do it, I should do it right, you know? Because onions are another one that everyone oh, cuts quite a bit. You may as well see how a veggie knife handles a very common task. Why not? That's the point of these videos, isn't it? So because I'm making more of like a coleslaw, I'm not gonna go for the dice, you know? And I know that Kevin will give me a hard time about putting those horizontal, I'm avoiding all that today. I'm just gonna cut the root out at a little bit of an angle and then just give like three or, or very thin slices. But this is a good example of that push-pull cut, you know? And, and again, why people like using this knife. Oh, it's kind of meant for this, right? Now this one, again, I keep talking about the shape of the blade, right? It's very flat, so it almost feels more like, like one of those old paper cutters. Like it's not, like it's not like a mezzaluna. It's not easily going back and forth, but it is like, it's good at this. You can go really fast if you don't try to go really hard. And I'm making more noise. So this is where I think it's gonna get a little more interesting. Um, a lot of, like I, I alluded before, a lot of people ask if a nakiri is a uh, good knife for cutting up meat. And I've always answered that it does really well with boneless meats. And there's, there's no reason not to reach for it. But I'm gonna butcher a chicken. I'm gonna break down a chicken, just kind of legs off, breast off, see how it goes. You know what, I, I think I'll do a good enough job, but I, I'm hesitant to say if it would be the thing I'd recommend for the job. For a lot of it, it's just sharp is better, right? And I think some of the things I'm gonna miss is I'm gonna miss the point, but so far so good. If you can do a lot of this stuff with a, uh, a chef's knife, you should have no issue with this. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that I would, like if you've never done this job before, you've never broken a chicken apart, I, I don't know that I would reach for this. Like if you're low on options, reach for your petty knife, your Guto, your Santoka. If you have a Hanasuki, go for it. That's obviously the knife for the job, but we'll see how this goes. But you know what, so far so good. The legs came off, I didn't miss any of the good bits. So we'll see. This is where I think it's gonna be a little bit clunky and I'm gonna leave some meat behind. But I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's, you know what, it's hard, but I'm managing. Like I could, if this wasn't something that you did all that often, you can see I'm leaving some meat behind in here that I would normally get, but it does all, it's doing okay. Just be mindful down in here, we've got some bones and joints, so just make sure you know where you're cutting. You don't wanna go through a, uh, you don't wanna force through a bone and chip your knife. Now, all that being said, one side is always easier than the other side, depending on which handedness you are. Yeah, this side would normally be my more difficult side, but you know, the one side was really easy. This side was a little more difficult. I guess I'd put that at a, well, maybe only a four or five out of 10. I don't know that it was, it's not a great choice for boning a chicken. Like, yeah, I got it done. I happen to be good at it and I happen to know how to do it. If you weren't as comfortable, I think you'd find that a lot harder than what I just found. But then, but say your, you know, your chicken comes home from the grocery store looking like this, like that's great. You know, there's no reason not to use an Akiri in this part. Like, you know, once it's already nice and clean and the, say the skin is already, is still on there, like you can use a Akiri to, uh, to slice through boneless meat, no problem. That's a great, a great choice for this job. You know, I'm cutting them kind of like this cause we're gonna fry them and make some sandwiches for everybody. But yeah, it is a little, it's a little clunky. Like I'm used to a thinner knife. So I think a big part, but if you never knew any different, like you'd probably get pretty good at this, but I am kind of like, like I'm dealing with the, well, I know better. So it's kind of, I'm letting it uh, be more important than it is. So here, this'll be hard. Like if this, 
I think taking the bones out would be the hardest thing yet. I'm gonna separate the drumstick from the thigh because I think the thigh is gonna be relatively easy. I think the drumstick's gonna be a pain in the ass and if it's too hard, I'm gonna stop. So just again, like I mentioned before, when I was cutting those wings off, just be aware where the bones are. It's okay to go through the joints. If you need a little more help breaking down a chicken, we've done a lot, like Mike's done this on YouTube, I've done it. There's a ton of options, you know, just go through our history. Maybe we'll throw a link to it in the comments or something for you. So yeah, just kind of, when you're doing a lot of this work, you learn to lean on the, uh, the tip of the knife, which I think is what's uh, holding me back here. I don't know if maybe I do it in reverse with the, that was the move. This is very unconventional and I do not recommend it using the back. It's just cause it's pointier back here. I keep looking for a point. So this is why you need a petty knife, but I managed like it's sharp. It's just, yeah, it's not for this part. I think is really like the important thing. Like it's doing okay. I'm not gonna win any awards doing it though. And then I'm gonna put some oil in here. We're gonna shallow fry. We all know what deep fry means, but we're gonna shallow fry. Gonna let that come up to temperature here. So it's the same idea. It's just you intend, you don't, the reason why you shallow fry and you don't deep fry is because you're cheap and you don't want to use so much oil, right? So I've got about a centimeter, somewhere around half an inch in the pan. It's a really cool Prince, Prince Kogio pan. I've got one at home. I know Nathan's got one. I've used this pan a few times for these videos. They're amazing. And uh, yeah, about half an inch sitting in the bottom of the pan. We're going to let it come up to, it'll still be like deep frying temperature, but it's just, it's an option. So your whole house doesn't smell like hot oil. You don't need to spend as much on oil. We're going to let that just kind of chill out. I like to use buttermilk and hot sauce as a marinade. You want to just have enough to just kind of everything swimming around in there. Some pepper, some salt. Nathan's telling me to do something. I'm going to keep doing this. Oh, the great thing about fried chicken is you can have that done yesterday. Like you can marinate that overnight. Give it at least 20 minutes. It'll kind of, the buttermilk's got acid in it, right? And so does the hot sauce. So I just don't want to drip this all over the place. The acidity breaks down the protein in the meat, makes everything a little more tender. Not really anything you really have to worry about these days. You know, unless you're buying some kind of crazy free run monster chicken. Like it's not often you come across a tough chicken anymore. I got everything all cut up. We got to mix it. It's a basic coleslaw. It's some onion. It's some garlic, it's some cabbage. Now it's some pepper. Now it's some salt, some cider vinegar. I'm surprised to see that Nathan didn't provide some of the home stock, you know? That guy's always making vinegar over there. Some vinegar. Now we gotta get the mayonnaise out. Oh, Hellman's is a good one. I like Hellman's, that's why I buy it home. So we get that out of here. I'm only allowed the one tool, right? Okay, so stirring coleslaw um, is worse than the chicken. Worse than the chicken. It looks like I'm just washing my hands lots today. Whoa, that's weird. I just used the wrong hand. I don't even know what to do with it. Yeah, that was that was a weird sensation. I didn't enjoy that. This place looks fancier than it is. All right. So the best piece of advice I can give a person when you're frying something, you always want to make sure the oil's hot. So I'm not using a thermometer. All right. But you can see how it's kind of fizzing up as I drag the food through it. Now you want to always drop stuff away from you. So if it does splash your skin, you still don't want to crowd your pan. The nice thing about making sandwiches is they don't have to be ripping hot by the time you go to eat. You still want to let meat rest. If you throw a bunch into your pan and the oil cools down too fast, you're going to be like poaching it in oil. You're not going to be frying it, but this is a good zone. You know, this oil is likely if you did prefer to use a thermometer, we're probably around like 325, 340, somewhere in that zone. And that's kind of where you want to be. You still want to get some color on it, right? Like that looks really good there. Like it's getting close. Like the thing about like cooking it like a shallow fry is like it's still sitting on the bottom of the pan. So you got to be aware of it.
Moving chicken around. This is the best part of frying chicken, is just if you move them around a lot, it looks like you know what you're doing. Flour all over me. My eyes sting because of the oil. It's like I'm gonna cook again. This one's done here. Oh, nice. Put all my pokey toys over here. And let's sprinkle some of this nonsense on it. So a Nikiri obviously does a lot and it's got, it's got some pros and cons. Lacking a point makes butchery a bit harder, but you can totally, you know what, if, the, if you don't buy a whole chicken and you buy chicken breasts, you buy chicken thighs, whatever, you'll manage, you'll be okay. Excels with veggies, right? Flies through cabbage, carrots, onions, any of that stuff, it's easy. It's all about that push pull, right? Any job where that's your move, you're gonna be, you're gonna love it. Who's gonna love it the most? People eating a lot of veggies, a lot of vegetarians. Um, you're not doing the butchery. I have one and I use it a ton. Um, it, it, it does cover all the bases. If you're not there buying a big piece of meat, trimming it down, you don't ever find yourself like using the point of the knife you have. A Nikiri could very well be the knife that does everything for you in your kitchen.